Here's a refresher on how to set up your Zoom account and how to schedule Zoom meetings. We're going to start by making sure you log into your email. So in a, in a browser window, go ahead and make sure you sign on to your email with the account you will be using in Zoom. So here is my Google email for hartwick.edu. That's open. We're going to open a new tab and go to hartwick.zoom.us. hartwick.zoom.us. You're always going to want to use this sign in with your Hartwick College Gmail account. Go to your profile. If it asks you to log in, again, you're going to have to make sure you're logged in with your Hartwick email. On your profile, it should show your account number, it should show your sign-in email, and then you should see license type. Basic or the licensed accounts, both of them can host up to 300 participants. The basic account just has a 40-minute time limit when you're doing a meet with more than a, one other person. So if it's just you one-on-one -on -one doing an interview with someone, that can be unlimited time even with a basic account. Once you're in here and you know that this is working, we can move on to using the actual Zoom app. If you can't get to this point, then we need to enable your account. Please call or email me and we can finish that step up. Assuming that you're able to get this far and can see that you have a licensed account, we're going to look for the actual Zoom program. If you don't have it on your bottom bar here or on your desktop, go to your Start menu. Go all the way to the bottom and go to Zoom. You should see a Zoom folder with the Zoom program. If you right click on that and go to More, you can pin it right to your taskbar, so it'll always be down here on the bottom. Go ahead and open that. Do not ever put in your email address and password. Always use Sign In with Google. If you have put in your username and password previously and have not done it this way, you may also have to go through a couple steps. Call me or email me and I can help you walk through that. Otherwise, assuming when you click on Sign In with Google, you'll come up with your accounts, you choose your hartwick.edu account, and go ahead and check Always Allow That and Open Zoom Meetings. That will bring you back to the Zoom program. Right here from the program, you can click on your initial or your icon or your picture and see that, yes, you are using your Hartwick email address and that you have a basic account or you have a licensed account. You should always go ahead and do this check for updates. If you haven't done this in a long time, there are some pretty substantial updates to Zoom that you will need. Eventually, you'll be losing features if you don't do this. So let's check it now. Make sure you're up to date. If you're not and there's an update available, do that. It always takes pretty quickly to get that update installed. And then get back to this screen. Now, right from this screen, you can on the fly start a new meeting. Or you can schedule a new meeting. Or you can take a look at the meetings that you already have scheduled. So back to the home screen, we're going to schedule a new meeting. Put in your date and your time. The length really doesn't matter. Even if you put in 15 minutes and your meeting went an hour, that's fine. If you have that 40 minute time limit and you have more than one other participant, it will warn you you are about to run out of time. Otherwise, whatever you put in here is fine. If it's a recurring meeting, if you wanted to set up like an office hours meeting, you could set that here. You're going to set the actual recurrence and the actual dates and times in your Google Calendar. For right now, we're not going to look at that. We're just going to look at scheduling a single meeting. 
you can either generate automatically or use a personal meeting ID. I recommend you generate automatically. That means every meeting you schedule will have a new ID and there's no chance that somebody has it from last time and could sneak into your meeting. I also recommend using the waiting room. You know who you're inviting. You're going to be sitting here waiting for them. Safest way is to make sure you're admitting the people that need to come into the meeting. Your preference, I like to have host and participants video on when they start the meeting. Everybody has the option to turn their cameras on or off once they've started. I just like to have them on to begin. Make sure you always use telephone and computer audio and your calendar is going to be Google Calendar. If you click on the advanced options, you can allow participants to join at any time. You don't want to do that. That means they could join your meeting before you. You don't necessarily want that. You could mute all participants on entry. I usually don't. That's something that you can mention during your meeting if that's something that they will need to do. Only authenticated users can join. This means they have to be signed in to our hartwick.edu email accounts. Not necessary to do and may cause more problems, so for now we're going to leave those all unchecked. You can automatically record this or you can start that recording from within your meeting. Either way, whatever you choose there, save it and it will open your Google Calendar. So on your calendar, now you have times that, yeah, if you wanted to tell somebody this is exactly a one hour meeting, go ahead and put that accurate time in here. You'll notice that there is your Zoom link. You could simply copy that and email it to anybody who you want to invite. That's the easiest way to do it. Just copy that, email it, and send it. This gives more detailed instructions, really, for anybody that's used Zoom. That link is all they need. Easy, the, another good way to schedule them is to invite your guests right from Google Calendar. So you can add anybody who you're inviting to this particular session. Even if it is somebody outside of our organization, it simply tells you that the calendar cannot be shown. It's going to ask you to verify, do you want to send this to these outside participants? So once you're ready to send to save that, it will automatically send it to your invited guests. They'll have all of this information. You don't need to do anything else. When it's time to start your meeting, you can start it right from your Google Calendar by simply clicking Join Meeting. Again, it's going to open this window and ask you, do you want to open Zoom meetings? Yes. It opens your existing Zoom and starts everything up. Right from your meeting, we've got a participant that you've invited, we're waiting for. You could click on Participants Now and invite additional guests. Best to do it by clicking on email and send them their invitation on Gmail. This opens it back up on your browser where you can simply add additional people. Simply sending this email will tell them that the meeting is in progress. There's the link to join it. You could send that and invite people at any time. Back in your Zoom meeting, again, here's your participant list. When your guest shows up, it will say up here, so-and-so is in the waiting room, admit them or deny them. And that's the basics of scheduling and starting a meeting. If you end the meeting, now you're looking at the actual Zoom program that you had open. If you click on Meetings, you also see that meeting that we created. You can start it right from there. Just like you did from the calendar, that starts your meeting.